All right, guys, how are you feeling about all this? Well, bad, and then I understood the last so good. Okay, so let me ask a question. If I were to give you a quiz right now on just formulas. No. Okay, here's the thing. If you don't know formulas, guys, it's like trying to go to to Russia with no language. You don't, you don't have a prayer of communicating with them. You know what I mean? You got to know the alphabet. You got to know how to speak at least. Even if you can't form sentences, you got to know some words, right, to get going. The formulas are like that. You have to have those or you really can't get started. If you're, st I mean, you can, I guess, if you're carrying around your formula sheet, but don't be that guy or girl or whatever that shows up on this test and doesn't know your formulas because it's just going to get bad. I mean, even if you know what to do, you're not going to be able to get it right and you're going to get hammered because of the formulas, right? And then also, so make sure, make some flashcards. I mean, write down um, something like on one side, arithmetic term formula and have that TN formula down to how to find terms and places and stuff. And then have arithmetic sum formula. And then have geometric term, geometric sum. I mean, they're all on that formula packet, but if you don't know them yet, some people understand why things are happening, so the formulas make more sense to them. Some of them, some people, and this is not just, I'm not trying to pick on you, but this is every year. Some people are like, ugh, that understanding, just give me them and let me work with them. In that case, you're gonna have to probably do a little bit more memorizing, all right? So whatever it takes, make sure you get those down. Also, if I ask you right now, what kinds of uh, what kinds of sequences have we dealt with so far? Can you go through that running list? Because if you can't, here's what's going to happen. And again, I'm going to write it down again. You ought to have this copied, and you ought to have these in your head because when you see a problem, sometimes you immediately look at it and go, "Oh, that's geometric," or "Oh, that's arithmetic." But so, and sometimes you might look at it and go, oh, that's one of those strange sums that's arithmetic over geometric. Or, oh, that's one of those strange sums with a pattern in the bottom. But sometimes you're going to look at something and you're not going to know what it is because I've disguised it. And I'm not intentionally trying to screw you guys over on your test, but it is a math team class. So I'm going to challenge you, when you and especially when you start working on these problems today, um, these, these uglier looking problems that came from math team questions or whatever. When you see these, you've got to have a plan. And if you don't, like if you look at it and you're like, I don't know what to do, then you ought to have that list to be able to go through. Okay? So that list, let me pull this up. All right. So here's the list that you ought to have. You ought to be able to say, all right, is it an arithmetic sequence or series? Is it arithmetic? And you ought to be able to check that. And how do you check to see if it's arithmetic? Common difference. Common difference. And how do you find a common difference? Subtract, Subtract what? One term from okay, so I'm taking any term and subtracting the term before. But I don't just check two terms. If I just check the first and the second term, everything's gonna have a difference, right? No matter what you do. So check that, and then check the third minus the second, and see if they're the same. If they are, you probably have a common difference. All right, although I guess I could be dirty and make the fifth one not match, but I, I, I typically don't do that. And if I did, you wouldn't be able to find the terms anyway, because it'd be some weird, crazy pattern. So check to see if it's arithmetic. If it's not arithmetic, go to the next. How do you check geometric? Common ratio. Doesn't have a common ratio. How do you check the ratio? T2 over T1. So you put the second over the first. And remember, if one of them is fractions, remember to divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. You know what I had somebody the other day in pre-cal? And this is somebody who consistently makes 95s, 98s, 100s. One of my better averages, if not the best average in the class. She did this. Like One of the terms was like, 42 and the next one was like 25 thirds 
and she, no, it was actually this. It was a, a one that had a fraction, like 25 thirds, and then it went to 42. And she said, let me check the ratio. And she went 42 over 25 thirds. And then she said, to divide by 25 thirds, you multiply by the reciprocal. But what she, did she not do? She did not multiply by the reciprocal. So make sure you actually don't do this, but actually multiply by the actual reciprocal, you know, and then figure that out. But, uh, but yes, to do a ratio, second over first or third over second, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what if it's not arithmetic or geometric, which in a normal Algebra 2 class would be all you're looking at? That really is probably the only two things you cover in regular Algebra 2. You're like, man, I wish I was in regular algebra too. <laughs> um, what, what, what other things do we have out there? We talked about them. two geometrics. And yeah, all the, but two geometrics, I'd maybe look at that real quickly because that, I gotta be honest, that is one that gets people a lot because it's just, you don't see them a ton. I mean, you do it a math tournament or whatever, but you don't see them a lot in my work. They occasionally show up. They, they might even have little patterns like, like uh, was it Lily was saying, oh, the bottoms, I'm adding, adding five, adding five, adding 10, adding 10, adding 20, adding 20. There might be a pattern like that. And even if there is a pattern, does that mean you know how to add it together? I mean, I could see real weird patterns, but if I can't identify what it matches with, I don't have a plan, right? So check for two geometrics woven together. I don't know how to describe that, whatever woven together. What's another one that we look for if it's not this? And by the way, is everybody good on what I'm saying here? Mm -hmm. Like the first, the third, and the fifth would have a common ratio. And then the second, the fourth, and the sixth would have a common ratio. But maybe the first, second, third, fourth. It, when, it's, when you look at it as a whole, it doesn't have a common ratio. But when you split it up, first, third, fifth, seventh, second, fourth, sixth, eighth, then it would have a common ratio. So if that happens, you remember what we did? What do we do? We added the first part using our infinite formula, and then we added the second part using our infinite formula, and then we added those parts together. And we'll, I'm sure we'll do another one of those at some point, but that's what I mean by this. So if it's not either of those three, then what will we go to? Strange sums. And those kind of fall into two categories. The strange sums... They, um, and you could treat these as strange sums option one or strange sums option two. And the first option was one that had like what? The, the pattern on the bottom. The pattern on the bottom. And the pattern on the bottom, the key is what two things do you look for in that pattern? Back to back. That be what? Cancels. The difference between them. The same. has to be the same. So that's the first thing you do. That has to be the same. And if the difference here is two and the difference here is three, then it doesn't fit this model. So the difference would have to be the same, which makes sense, right? Because I always put that one over the difference out front when I'm calculating this. And then what's the other thing that has to happen? Two things cancel. Back to the back. back. Well, yeah, but when you're looking at it, we don't know any about anything about that yet. What do you notice about this lead number here? And this lead number here? And this lead number here. Oh, it's going to be arithmetic. Though that lead number is going to be arithmetic. And then it's going to have a difference. Like, say it's um, 4 times 6, or 7 times 9, or 10 times 12. This one, by the way, would, nothing would ever cancel because I've spread them out too far. But anyway, it, that would be the key is the difference is the same and the leading numbers are arithmetic. And then when you wrote it all out, you start seeing stuff cancel, all right? In this case, that this, was, this would not have been a good example. Something like maybe this would be a better example. Are y'all with me? I'm with you. And then what would be the option two? The arithmetic over geometric. The arithmetic over geometric. So maybe something like three, four, five on the top. And then maybe something like eight, 16, 32 on the bottom times two, no, yeah, on the bottom. And in that situation, that's a, a third option. I mean, sorry, a fifth option. Are y'all seeing this? Have we talked about anything else at this point? 
So if they don't fall in these categories as of right now, then we wouldn't know how to do it. Now we might be able to notice a couple of things, like for instance, if I didn't ask you to find the sum, and I said, hey, just find the next term, I mean, there are problems like this. Can you see what's happening here? Yeah, I'm adding one, I'm adding two, I'm adding three, I'm adding four, I'm adding five. So you could say, oh yeah, I'm adding six, that would get me to 24. And you can actually, there's ways to be cleverly creative with these and actually uh, figure out, um, you know, like skip to the hundredth term and figure out what that is, but we haven't learned that yet. But as of right now, so we might be able to find certain values, but when it comes to doing sums, these formulas or finding certain terms, I've got to identify what it is. This is an example of what, something called a quadratic equation. And you know the quadratic formula is what we use to solve stuff like this. You know, quadratic equations, stuff like that, right? Well, a quadratic sequence, something like this, would look very similar to that, except it would have like n squares and n's. And, and this doesn't match that, unless I'm shocking one like you. No, it does not. So, um, but this would be a quadratic formula. We haven't talked about that yet. And there are lots of other sequences. We just haven't gotten to all of them, or nor are we going to do all of them. But are y'all with me on these so far? I'm with you. Now you got to have a game plan, or you're going to, or you're going to run into questions, and um, like your enthusiasm, or you're going to run into questions on your test, and you're going to be like, you're just going to be stunned, and you're just going to be staring at it. All right. But now, if I can identify it's arithmetic, and I go, hey. Find the sum of the first 100 terms, and you're like, yeah, I don't have that formula memorized. Then you're dead. Even though you, you, you kind of are starting to get in the right direction, you've got to know these formulas. So what is my formula for the terms in an arithmetic? Um, e to the n equals e to the 1 plus parentheses n minus 1 times t. Right, and I could replace the t1 and the 1 with... Uh, T, M, and M, right? Because these are terms, and those are places of those terms, all right? And then what would the sum be if I wanted to sum a bunch of terms? N, uh, N over 2 times first plus last, right? And we got that from Jung Friedrich, right? And basically what he was doing was adding the first and the last and multiplying by the number of pairs of terms. Right, that's what n over 2 was giving me because he was pairing the outside. Remember that? That example, he was pairing the outer ones together and pairing the first and the last is the second, the second, the second, the last, and the third, and the third, and the last, etc. etc. So that was that formula. And then what were my formulas for geometric terms? T to the n equals t1 times r to the n times r to the n minus, n minus 1. And I could replace that t1 and that one with. T, M, and M, or replace the ones with M's, right? Because these are terms, and these are places. And what are the sum formulas? Um, these are usually where people start forgetting the formulas. One times. So it's either T1 times, times one minus R, R, R to the N, not N minus one. Oh, My pre-cal kids, a whole bunch of them had N minus one in their math. All of that over and you remember that N is not on the outside it's on the inside which means like I can't do stuff like this 1 minus R cubed over 1 minus R and I can't cancel that and make it a square I can't do that I could do that if it was like this but it's not okay so don't make that mistake in there as well and then what was the other formula if you want to remember it there was another one I taught you that I said works great when you don't know how many terms, but you happen to know the last term. And it saves you the trouble of having to go back and use this formula to find out how many terms there are. You remember what it is? T1 minus RTN or TNR, right? Now that's not T1 to the R, you're just multiplying these two all over. One minus R, that part's the same. Right? And anything that I don't know here, how do I find it? Use this. Anything I don't know here or here, I would have to use that other formula. Although this usually takes care of a lot of that issue. 
because you have both formulas to help you out in that regard. And then what's the formula for an infinite geometric? A sum not of a certain number of terms, but for an infinite number of terms? T1. T1. Does that always work for infinite sums? Only if B. Only if it's negative one. To what's it? Only if T, the ratio. The ratio is negative one to one. But it's negative negative one, one to one in between there, but not yeah. inclusive, right? And then also, of course, it can't be. Yeah. And that's true for a common difference. Can't be zero either. You don't get much of an arithmetical geometric sequence if you're adding or multiplying by nothing. Yeah. Is that infinity formula? Is that for geometric or arithmetic? Or that's for geometric only. All of these are geometrics. This, you can only do arithmetics, and you cannot do infinite arithmetics. And why can I not do infinite arithmetics or infinite geometrics whose ratio aren't that big? Because what's happening to the, the sum? It's just getting bigger. It's getting bigger and bigger, and it is not converging. Nice. It's not converging on a certain value. And you remember we talked about the length of the room as I walked half and then another half, and then another half. I got closer and closer and closer. If you didn't see that in the, in the video, because I left the screen, it's kind of like this. If I were to fill in half of this box, and then I were to fill in half of the half that's left, so far that's like half the box and a fourth of the box. And then if I figure it, fill in half of the fourth that's left, that's like an eighth. And then half of the eighth that's left, that's like a sixteenth, right? And if I keep doing halves, the total sum, if I go forever, is converging on what? Yeah. One box, right? Now, the, the, the space that's left over is going to be zero, but the sum of all the shaded stuff, right, is converging in on one box or whatever. So when a, when a sum converges on a certain value, those are the ones I have a fighting shot of being able to find the sum of. But that doesn't happen with series like 2, 4, 8, 16, or even arithmetics like 2, 4, 6, 8, because what is the sum doing? It's not converging and trying to fill in and trying to get closer and closer to a value. It's doing what? Diverging. It's diverging or getting huge. And I can't add those. Now you might go, why can't you just say infinity? Well, that's actually good logic. The sum is approaching infinity or perhaps negative infinity. But in math, we don't say that. We just say there is no sum because to be a sum, it has to be an actual value, something tangible I can hold on to. And infinity is more of an idea. When you get to uh, upper level mathematics, they, call, they talk about bound theory. And bound theory says something is growing without bound, right? It's unbounded, the value. And that's, that's what we say infinity, but we say there's no sum in that in that situation so this no sum no sum but something like this because the ratio is between negative one and one i got a fighting shot are y'all seeing that now i say you got a fighting shot there are sequences that are converging on something but we're not going to learn everything on the planet in algebra 2. i mean it's algebra 2 right there's a lot of algebra out there It just jams and jams and jams. It's almost like the feed down here. It's like it's trying to. It's got a couple of new key right now. It's like it, you can hear it spinning and it just. And it's been doing it for like three or four months. But I normally can get it going. Man. Awesome. Home with tax dollars at work right there. All right, how do we. Do I? Same nation. <laughs> okay. Same now. See, if I went any, if I taught anywhere else, I need a printer. Okay, put in a request four years later. We'll probably fix it right there, but I still hope that. No, it's still as well. Yeah. Anyway, all right, so. Guys, if you have all this down and you've been able to do the problems, some of those homework problems are asking questions maybe like, remember the one with the box 
and then it had a diamond in there and then it had a box, a square, and then another diamond. Those kinds of things, like I know that those are geometric situations. And once you start seeing those, if that problem shows up again and you didn't skip it on your homework and you found it, you'll be fine. But when you skip those isolated questions, it's gonna come back to haunt you. All right, so if you have those questions, make sure you're asking them before school, after school, beginning of class, or whatever. All right? Okay, so today, I want to talk about um, that infinite sums practice. And I said to kind of take a look at it. Does anybody have any questions on, on any of the strange sums stuff that you saw? And I told you to take a look at the infinite sums practice. And uh, I want to just do some of these with you. There's not a ton of them. Like, there's like eight. Or, well, no more than that. No, there's more than eight. Fifteen. All right, I wanted you, did any of them jump out at you as kind of odd? Number five. Number five. All right, take a look at number five. All right, here we go. Okay, so number five, there's a lot of different, anybody do this? This is number five. What do you see going on? There's a lot of ways to go about this, and I think there's an easy way and a hard way. And the, honestly, the hard way is to, is to stick with what you know about arithmetic sequences. So the easy way is to be a little creative. All right, so first thing I do, what do I see across the top? This is one big fraction that happens to have a whole bunch of terms added here and a whole bunch of terms added here. The difference is what? Here, they're alternating signs. And if I'm alternating signs, is that still arithmetic? Yes. No. I don't think so. Do what? Well, and here's the terrible thing. It's kind of like a ratio. Because normally when I see my signs change, it, the ratio is negative one, but it's not geometric. All right. Look at it. Here that over that, negative two, that over that, negative three halves. That over that, negative four thirds. You know what's actually going on here in the numerator is just a what? <laughs> Arithmetic sum. So that shouldn't give you any trouble. How do you find the sum of these 1,999 terms right here? First and last. So you add the first and the last. So here is my sum of the whole, I'm, I tell you, I'm just gonna do the numerator right here. So here's the numerator. I'm gonna take the first and the last and then multiply that by what? The number of terms, how many terms have, do I happen to have here? That's actually pretty easy to calculate, right? Because there's from one to 1999. So 1999 divided by two. And that's my sum, right? So the sum of the numerator ends up being this. And if you're on your game, rather than try to get a decimal here, what's one plus 1999? 2,000. And what's 2,000 divided by two? 1,000. And what's 1,999 times 1,000? With three zeros. So my numerator, I'm good. Now, here's how you gotta go about the denominator. I've gotta make it fit something I know. So anybody got any ideas? What you got? I was kinda thinking like, Negative two plus three is one, and there's like a certain number of pairs of those. Yeah, and that to me is going to be, and if you didn't hear, I'll mention it more loudly. But that's going to be to me the non-conventional but easiest way to go about this. And that's what she's saying is she noticed that I had a one here, and then negative two and three also gives me a one. This is going to be a negative four and a positive five, right? That's also going to give me a one, and then it's going to you're going to keep pairing these all the way across, right? And at the very end, you're going to have this 1999 and negative 1998, and that's also going to give me a one. So I got a whole bunch of ones. The question is, how many ones do I have? This is where you get in trouble. It's every every half of nineteen ninety eight plus one. So half of nineteen ninety eight plus one. No, one's a one. That's what it is. Well, yeah, but there's a one. It's not. So there's one minus. Yeah, so guys, this is what you have to reconcile. So here's what I would say. What if this is kind of my my brain thing, and some of you have said the right thing. Some of you said half of nineteen ninety nine, 
because I'm basically saying there's 1,999 terms. If I divide it by two, I get 1,999 over two, right? Which is, uh, no, well, you said half of It's half of 1,998. 1,998 plus, uh, right. You take yeah. that one out. My thinking would be a little bit different than this, because I think you guys got a little confused on this. I would do this. I would say if I do one, two, three, four, like odd, even, odd, even, all the way through this, this to me is a little bit easier to pair. Are you kind of following me? Because now I can say, hey, of the first 1,998 terms, all of them are equal to what? Negative one. Negative one. And how many pairs do I have from these 1,998 terms? 999 pairs of negative one. So I said, I have 99, this is my denominator. I said that I have 999 pairs of negative one with an extra 1999. And to me, that was easier to think about. But some of you didn't have any trouble saying, hey, I've got 999 positive ones. Um, yeah, positive ones. Hold on, we did the other way. Yeah, you had 999 positive ones with an extra one left over. Either way, you're still gonna get 1,000, aren't you? And you can see that I get 1,000 right there, and I can just swing that 1999000 over 1000, and cleverly, in 1999, the answer was 1999. Which begs the question, if you ever have no idea, should you just guess the calendar year? Yeah, you never know. So you'd be shocked how often, I think people that create these tests are like, ooh, I'll be sneaky, and they're like, is it really that sneaky? Ah. Anyway, y'all track with me? But guys, if you wanna to stick to the math, and, you're, and let's just say, you know what, I wouldn't have thought about that. Isn't this pattern right here, what if I separated, what if I just, I have the numerator, right? What if I separated the first, the third, the fifth, or the second, the fourth, the sixth, what do I end up getting? One, three, five, seven, it's all the odds, right? All the way through this last odd, and then I take the evens, negative two, negative four, negative six, all the way through that last even, what do I end up having? Two, two, arithmetics. two arithmetics. So if I have two arithmetics, how many terms do I have right here? Now I could use my, it's a thousand, I could use that, and here's the way I think about it. From one to two thousand, don't you have a thousand evens and a thousand odds? Right? Well, I didn't go to two thousand, I left off the last even. So that means if it did go to two thousand, that would be a thousand odds and a thousand evens? Well, this does have all the odds, so there's a thousand odds, first plus last, and there's 999 of these evens because I left off the 2,000. So I have 999 of first plus last. And you'll see the math on this. What do you get? 2,000 and 2,000 over two. And 1,000 times 1,000 is a million. And then over here, what do I have? I'm not gonna cancel that. What does this give me? Negative 2,000, and what's negative 2,000 in a 2? Negative 1,000, and what's negative 1,000 in that? And what happens when you take 1,000 thousands and subtract 999 thousands? You get 1,000, same thing you did before, right? So a couple of different ways to do that. That's written number 11. That's really something that we ought to be able to do. I mean, written number 25 at this stage is gonna be a whole lot uglier, all right? So that's something we ought to be able to do. We can do it, but if you think creatively and grouping, whenever I see arithmetic looking stuff that alternates signs, I start grouping, because I get the same thing every time when it's, when it's arithmetic looking, like one, two, three, four, five, six, but it alternates signs. Grouping is always gonna give you the same thing each time. All right, what else looked a little funny that you saw I might wanna take a look at? Anything, or did they all look pretty doable? Say it again. Okay, this actually doesn't fall under anything we've done. 
So if you're looking at number line, it's very easy to assume the position, right? Just take your beating. Don't even give it a shot because right now, you, if you go down your list, you're like, oh, I don't know what to do. But what did I say about assuming the position? Don't do don't it. Do it. Don't do it. But I, I, I've given lots of little analogies, but I said if there's one thing you can do, Random just try it. What? Skip for the cheese. Random maze. Yeah. Random maze, yes. So we're going to try one thing. Is there any one thing that I could do right here? Don't look at me. You can actually subtract, right? Okay, so let's see what happens. What's one minus a half? A half. A half. What does this tell me to do right here? Okay. What's one minus a third? What's one minus a fourth? One minus a fifth. And it says plus, uh, times dot 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 times. What's one minus one over n? Do the math. One over You've been going five over five minus that. You've been going four over four minus that. What do you do here? Okay, so here we go. Now, what do you notice is happening now? Oh, if I were to multiply these, that cancels, that cancels, that cancels. Now, if that does and that does and that does, what can you assume keeps happening? That with that, that with that, that with that, and eventually, the term before here with that term on top. Because it's a pattern, what are you left with? One over n. Wow. So this fell into the category of sequence and series, but not because it matched anything we did. And no, I would not give this a separate crap. I would give this a sniff for the cheese category and don't just assume the position. Thank you very much. Nice. That's unprecedented. Unbelievable. I'm not kidding, man. Any other system, they charge you 10 cents a copy. You know? I literally. It's a Christmas miracle. It's a Christmas miracle. It is. Look at this. I'm not kidding. I sent a text. Forty-five minutes ago. How does that even happen? And I have a new laser printer sitting here. And it says room 206. And it says room 206. No. You know what's even better about this? Nobody, this is like a system-wide printer. Like, there's like maybe two in every pod. One of them just happens to be in this room. No one uses this thing. So it's like my own personal laser printer. Oh, yeah. I mean, awesome. Chet used, Coach Walker uses it like once a week, maybe. Oh, yeah, because everybody uses Mormons. Yeah. They wear them as Mormons out. Yeah. I think people are scared of me here. <laughs> Good. Mormons not. Good. Good. I think I have a resting, intimidated face. Yeah. I mean, people that don't know me. Like, until they get to know me, they're like, oh, yeah, man, I got it. I used to not wear glasses. Um, so I was always kind of trying to see people, so I had this angry look on my face. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm fine without them, pretty much. It just helps a little bit. But, uh, anyway, enough about that. What else? Anything else on anything on here that, that you're curious about, that you're wondering about, that looks a little funny? What about number 10? Okay. Now, now th there's a sum of this means something. Dividing by three, does that isn't that kind of like going to the bank? Yeah. It's not an S, equation, S right? So S is it is it necessary? I mean, okay, okay. Maybe you can't. I'm not gonna say you can't. I'm just saying, what kind of sequence is it? Because don't do X. If it's geometric, is there really a need to pull out a three? What do you do if it's geometric? Now you can, but don't make it harder on yourself. Yeah, this is an infinite geometric. What's the ratio? Negative one half. Negative one half. If you cannot see that, that's okay. Because the check is, take a term, divide by the one in front of it. To divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal, right? That cancels, that cancels, and I get negative one over two. Let's check it again. You take a term, you divide by the one in front, right? You get the same thing, it's geometric. And if it's geometric, dude, I don't have to be creative anymore. How do I find the sum of an infinite geometric? First term over one minus the what? The negative one half. What happens when I subtract a negative? 
What's a one plus a half? Three halves. And how do I divide by a three halves? I multiply by a two thirds, and I get a half. Wow. Right? So although factoring a three out and multiplying it back in later is totally possible, and if it was a strange sum, probably would want to do that to make it look a little better, or maybe I want to do that to make it look a little better for me. But again, don't do anything you don't have to do. Identify what it is. What else are you looking at? Let you see. Think before you even answer that, I want to do this one. Now, this was a ciphering question. Okay? And Vestavia, back in 1999, they didn't do one minute, two minute intervals. They did 30 seconds, a minute, a minute and a half. So if you wanted to get big points, and it went like five, two, one. If you wanted to get five points, you had to be able to do something in 30 seconds. Now, I want you to look at this. They, they even invited you to look at it, and, and they told you what it was. You're like, man, they told me it was geometric. It's infinite. The only way I can add that is to assume the ratios between negative 1 and 1, right? So this is child's play. I just want, but look at the math. Do what? I think we had this Yeah, I gave it to you. But this right here, I want you to see the math. And remember, think 30 seconds. How would you find the ratio? Now, I know it is one because it told me it's geometric. You just divide the first term and second term. Because That's what most people do. First term divided by the second term. How do I divide by that? Multiply by the reciprocal. And what do I end up with? Hold on. What do I end up with? One over root two, which is root two over two when I rationalize. Okay, great. I got the ratio. Now, if it's infinite geometric, now again, 30 seconds, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to get five points. Now, how do you find the infinite geometric? T sub one. So T sub one over one, over one minus the ratio. Doesn't seem so bad, right? Now, you can multiply by the conjugate, but I gave you a hint about something. I'm going to keep telling you this. What do you do to make something look prettier when you have a fraction inside of another fraction? What is something you can always do to kind of clean it up? Well, I actually can't do that. I can't, like, and let me show you why. Is it true that 3 plus 2 over 7 is 5 sevenths? Yes. Is 3 sevenths plus 2 sevenths also 5 sevenths? Yes. So that lets me break it up this way, right? right? I love to do that. Okay, now, right here. Is this equal to the number one? Yes. Is this equal to this? No. No, the number one is not equal to three plus nine sixth, is it? So this idea is sad. Oh. That was kind of stupid, but whatever. <laughs> Don't do that. Are you with me? So, but I can, I told, I've told you this at least once, haven't I? To, um, that if you ever have a fraction within a fraction, find the common denominator of everything. So this, is, this, this and this have a common denominator of two, and just multiply the top and the bottom by it, and distribute it in. What's two times this? Root two, that looks better already. What's two times one? What's two times this? Root two. So that looks to me a little bit better than it did in purple, but it still needs to be rationalized. Remember, 30 seconds is long gone, right? Now I'm trying to get it into a minute. So now I gotta rationalize. What's root two times two? What's root two times root two? What's two times two? Four. What do the outer and the inner on a conjugate get? Half? What happens? They always cancel. So I'm going to jump to last times last. Negative two. I got past a minute. Now I'm just trying to get it in, get that last measly point, right? So I end up with root two plus two over two, and that I can break up, right? So I get that over that plus that over that and I get my answer. And maybe I get a point. Let me show you a little trick. Do you know how sometimes we look at a sequence and it's not geometric? 
but it happens to be two geometrics? Well, guess what's also true? Anytime it's one geometric, you can still do that. So sometimes it's not a geometric, but when you split it up, it's two geometrics. But if it's a geometric and they told you it was, then you always can split it up into two geometrics. Now you may go, why would you want to do that? Well, this is why I want to do it. It's awful looking. But look what happens. Look how simple this becomes if I treat it like two geometrics. What's my ratio here? One half. First term over one minus a half. What's one minus a half? A half. To divide by a half, you multiply by two, and I get root two for the first part. Whoa. Right? Second part. What's one half plus one fourth plus one eight? Well, heck, I've already done that in this class at least twice. What's half the room plus the fourth room plus the eighth room? One. That guy's getting five points. But because he got it in under 30 seconds. Now, even if you didn't remember the half plus a fourth, you could still say, oh, one half over one minus a half. Oh, a half over a half is still one. So now, do I always do that? No. I do that when I know it's geometric, which they told me, and I see, oh, crud, this is going to be an awful looking ratio. Well, ooh, that would be a much easier ratio, right? Just something to think about. I'm not giving you any ciphering questions, but certainly we made short work out of that, didn't we? Yes, we did. Okay, what else? Any other one that you're looking at, you're wondering about? What are you doing, number six? Can you see it? Yeah, yes. If I change one half to two fourths, and one fourth to times four times four, it ends up being what? <coughs> Arithmetic over geometric. Now, I might have had to check geometric, check some other things to see, but at some point, I'm going to look at it and go, is that arithmetic over geometric? The hint to me was that. 1, 3, 5, 2, 8, uh, 32. If that part looks arithmetic, I bet I can change these and make, and the bottom is geometric, I bet I can change them and it'll fit. Um, so hopefully you know that plan, how to do those. Uh, somebody asked about 19, 15. Okay, now this, they're just ugling up for the sake of ugling it up. If they would not have put that in there, would you have known what to do? Yes. Yeah. They're doing that to make you go, whoa, whoa, what's going on? That just happens to be the formula. Okay? Like, think about it. If I plug a 1 in there, I get a 1 and a 3. First term, 1 and 3. If I plug a 2 in there, I get a 3 and a 5. Second term, 3, 5. They're just putting it in there to say, hey, there's the pattern, but you didn't really need that. That's them trying to get you to assume the position. But don't bother. You see what's going on, right? So how would he do these? The difference is 2. So 1 over 2. And then what do you do with each of these? A third minus a 1 fifth. A fifth minus a 1 seventh. 1 seventh. And you're going to keep going for, for 2a. 1 19th minus a 1 over 24, 21st. And what do you notice? They immediately back to back cancels, which means all this middle junk's going to cancel. And if there's only one positive one in the front, there's one negative one in the back, which means everything else canceled. And your job now is just to quickly do that. And our trick is 21 minus 1 over 21 times a half, and that 20 cancels and gives me 10 21st. And that was a written test question. You could have done that ciphering easy in 30 seconds, I'm guessing. Gosh, Monday. Anything else? All right, Monday, we're going to learn about quadratics and harmonics. And those will be the last two sequences that we talk about. We're going to review on Tuesday, we're going to test on Wednesday, and then we're going to start our final exam review in here. Uh, 10 over 21. And all the answers, you notice they're right up there, Sam, up there on the corner of this one. Yeah. So guys, work on the things we talked about today, and uh, the sequences that we do on Monday I think you'll like. Um, they used to be ugly, but we've learned some tricks I'm going to share with you that make them pretty easy. And um, hopefully we'll have a good finish to the semester. And also, 
You got some free time this weekend. What might be wise to do? Study for a powers quiz. Maybe study for a powers quiz and also start the exam review. Start on that exam review if you haven't already. Maybe knock a little bit of that out. It's like it's like I I sit there and I'm like I know how to do this. I know how to do this.